Hey guys, it's Wave618. It's the 3rd of April 2019. It's 1 p.m. BST. All right, today's video is all about Bitcoin. We're going to talk about, I'm going to, in today's video, it's going to be slightly different. I'm going to entertain both the bullish and the bearish arguments because there's a lot of debates going on in the, um, the crypto community right now as to what's happening. And to be honest, uh, nobody knows for sure. Um, so yeah, there's plenty to discuss. So I'm going to dis um, discuss both arguments and I'm going to explain why the price that we're currently sitting at is hugely significant. Um, yeah, so that's what you can expect from this video. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue from where I left off with uh, my, my long-term count. So you know very well if you've been watching my videos that I've been calling this a, uh, a W to begin with. X was our descending triangle. It's A, B, C, D, E to here. And then we had our Y wave, which was three waves down. So first wave, second wave, third wave. And this is where I projected the bottom. I said I was calling 3200 for quite a while. And the reason being is there was a nice fib uh, extension. If that's our wave W, wave Y was a 0.382 extension. And I saw a similar scenario back in 2014. So that's why I was calling for this low. As well as that, there was a confluence with this daily candle close here also offering support so there's a confluence of um, Elliott wave and order blocks there um, so yeah that's why I was calling this the bottom uh, not the bottom I was calling it a, a significant low okay now my primary count was that this was going to be a W X Y and then I wasn't sure as I say I was initially when we were up here I was calling this to be the absolute bottom, okay? However, since then we got further price action and I was a little bit concerned that this wasn't, we weren't seeing enough volume come in. So if we just pop volume on the chart here. So really when you see a massive sell off, which we did see some good volume come in, but not as much as the volume here, for example. So relatively it was smaller volume. And on top of that, you'd expect the highest volume to be at the, at the very bottom. You know, this is the best opportunity to buy in if this were to be the absolute bottom. So you'd expect higher volume at this point, which we didn't really see. Now there is the whole debate about whether we can trust this data on the chart with regards to volume, which is a whole different you know, discussion. Um, but something we have to really keep into, into consideration, you know, no indicator should override your overall judgment because they can all be manipulated uh, in particular volume um, okay uh, so yeah I was calling certainly this to be a significant swing okay back here I was calling it the low once we got this um, you know we we fed to see significant volume come in we saw a lot of consolidation uh, I was thinking this is all looking like a very corrective rather than impulsive. And as a result, I was thinking this may not be the absolute low because typically you'd get a lot of media attention, huge selling climax volume relative to previous volume. And um, yeah, well, they're, they're key things that I would look for. Uh, that said... Um, as I say, volume can be manipulated and a lot of people have been liquidated from their long positions with this massive, um, you know, collapse all the way down. It's almost, uh, probably almost 80% of this uh, move up. So, yeah, so then I, I was basically labeling this WXY. Um, so I'll just go into that now. Let's pull up. For hourly, it's fine. So yeah, just sticking with my primary count, first of all, 
because I was saying for the last couple of videos that we're going to see a WXY XZ. So we're currently in our second X, and I was saying this is made up of a WXY, and you can see that this looks like it would have completed. So if we take that wave there, second wave down to here, and our third wave comes up to 1.618. And on top of that, there was further confluence because if we look at our Y wave, <coughs> which is this move up to here, you can see that also shows that the first wave or the third wave is a 1.618 extension of the first wave. Okay, so there is a confluence there and a reason why we found resistance, as well as the fact that if we zoom out a little bit, go on the daily. You can see we met this high here, and what was that high? That was the beginning of, the, well, it was the, the start of this uh, collection of orders, which involved all of this price action here, that preceded the big move up all the way up here. So it's a very significant level, this one here. So again, we found resistance there. On top of that, there, there's this channel that you can see quite clearly, the uh, parallel blue lines. So the way that this is drawn is just initially connecting these lows and then drawing a parallel line. And you'll find that the parallel line is in fact connecting these highs and extrapolated, it brings us to this point here. So this is a very, very significant level and it's no surprise that price failed to go beyond it. Now for me, this, as far as I'm concerned, is a, a nice completion of an X wave. You know, if the bears are in control of this market, I would expect quite, you know, dramatic selling at this point. Um, and right now, if we zoom in, we're, we're really hovering around this level. We're not really bouncing off it. We need to see the daily close because um, there's not been a daily close above this line yet. Just zoom in. So yesterday we we closed here today we're currently above the dotted line but uh yeah it's the daily close we want to see whether it's going to be above or below this line so that would be very key so for me obviously price could come up higher There's, we can all see 5800 is a very significant level uh plenty of resistance at that level So that's around here. So that's also obviously a very significant level to break. But for me, I'd be concerned if this level breaks. You know, being you know, I'd be concerned about the bearish uh, downtrend if if this level breaks. Because if it comes up to here, that's that's really a show of strength. I would expect this level to hold. Uh, another reason, if we put, put my pitchfork that um, I've been plotting for a while now, so I think it was this, not that one, this one. So this pitchfork, uh, let's take away these blue lines because they're a distraction now. Okay, so we've got this pitchfork. The way this is drawn out, this is our first pivot at the start of the uh, move down second pivot at the end of W, and third pivot at the end of X. Then you can see we came down, hit, you know, found resistance, or support rather, at the median line, went sideways to the upper median line, and then broke sharply above. And certainly it could collapse before it reaches the upper warning line. But any, if you can see, if we come up to 5800, if we continue in this, you know, almost vertical gradient that we're going in right now, would be almost breaking this upper warning line. And for me, that is another significant um, indicator that there is a loss in momentum of the downtrend and the bears losing control. So for me, this level in itself is very, very significant. But if we break this one, that is even more significant. So people talking about how this could be a W, X, Y, and then the X wave could come up, you know, much higher. I'm not, I'm not, I wouldn't be happy with that at all. For me, that is breaking too many bearish sentiment indicators. I wouldn't like that at all. For me, the bears to fail 
to hold on to this level is already very very significant so that's why in today's video I want to prepare you for the possibility of this being the absolute bottom yeah so I am going to talk about the bullish scenario as well so it's, you've always got to have both opinions you can never be certain about whether something's going to be bullish or bearish so you have to be ready for both scenarios um, and now the time has come I believe for us to certainly consider and plot the possible bullish argument now that's not to say I am bullish now because as I say this level is still holding we've not seen a daily close above and um, typically the third day of the month for the last one year has been quite a significant level and it's the reason it is it's the first week following the CME expiry the futures expiry and that's usually uh, where the people trading the futures they try to shake you out okay first week they shake you out and then following then it allows them to get in on their optimal positions and trade their positions for the rest of the month uh, so at the moment we're at a level you know around it's the third of the month typically often in the past price will reverse at this level check it out for yourself over the last one year around third maybe up to the sixth seventh of the month you'll often see a reversal um, that said this could be just a massive you know change in the tide really and they and it could just continue going up but until we see a, a true break of this level, you know, I would still be uh, of the opinion that we're going to come down further and make a new low. Uh, as I say, the next level is 3000. That's the next place to test. Uh, whether it's going to be a, a dramatic low, people talking about 1000, 2000, I'm not too sure about that. I think maybe a more curved, if we are to come down lower, it might be a bit more curved. So you can see the the move from this low to this low was relatively steep but it'll be less steep I believe for example it could come down to here around 3000 maybe even 2500 because there's a fib level there the 0.886 retracement but um, yeah but I'd expect it to, to come down quite in quite a shallow curved out bottom if it were to come down lower anyway as I say, we are going to discuss the, the bullish alternative. Now, um, <clears throat> let's go into that. So, first things first. I think the first thing we'll start with, I'm going to pull up a different chart. That's um, pull up BLX just because that has all the historic price for Bitcoin. Let's go on the weekly. And these, this is fib time I've plotted here, which I will discuss also in this video because it's very significant to determine how long this correction has gone and whether it could have completed. Um, okay, so, so this is our weekly. Let's just come off the log scale a moment. You can see here, first of all, let's take volume off and there we go okay first of all this is the move up to 2014 now some people are calling this uh, the wave three I don't call that wave three I'm calling this the end of a major wave one and the reason is we've got a nice a clear uh, wave one here two three four five and there are Fibonacci ratios to support that also if we just pull out our Fib tool so obviously did overshoot but I went beyond the 6.84 but then if we look at the 2014 high so if we take go from the genesis down here up to the end of wave 3 extend that from bottom of wave 4 which is here 
you know, very close to the 4.236, which is another reputable, reputable Fibonacci level. But for me, I, I, I can't help but see this is a very clean five waves, move, uh, five waves up. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So then, then price goes crazy. But basically, whichever way you want to count it, if this is our wave one, this is two, this is three, this is four, that's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is this is a one, this is two, and then typically with each wave, one, three, and five, there'll be a massive correction after it. And you can't really, with the, you can't really see, for example, like here, See, wave one goes up massively and then corrects. Wave three then goes up massively and then corrects. We didn't really see that occurring in here. If this was the end of wave three, we didn't really see it. We didn't see a massive wave one followed by a massive correction and then a massive wave three followed by a massive correction. The corrections were a bit more controlled and um, maybe that's because Bitcoin you know, gathered more um, support you know, publicly and so the pullbacks weren't as strong. That's one argument for it. So you you could argue this was our wave major wave one, major wave two, and this was our wave three, and now we're in wave four. And this is obviously retraced very significantly. So it's beyond our point seven eight six. So from a in terms of the price retracement, that that's already retraced very very significantly. I don't see why it needs to retrace any more than that. You know, if, if Bitcoin is going to be the future, then why, why, how can you justify that it needs to come down lower than, uh, you know, 80% of its value? I don't see why it needs to come down any lower than that. So the next thing to discuss is obviously how long this took, this retracement, because this is our five waves up. And then let's see how long this correction took. So, um... In fact, let's just show it with fib time. So this is the beginning, end of wave one. And you can see what happens is the bottom forms just before the point 382. Then we go sideways, then we go up. Okay, so just remember that. Now let's see what happens. In fact, let's take that off now. So wave three starts here. Let's just plot it on the start of it first. But other points. So let's just get all the data in the chart. So we want to bring this all the way to where wave three comes up to. And then we want to extend from the end of wave three so again, this correction has again, just before the 0 0.382 in terms of time of the major move up, it found its bottom, gone sideways, and it's starting to go up. Whether it might go sideways more before going up, that's another argument. But the uh, point I'm trying to make is, in terms of time, just like if this is our major wave 3 and this is our major wave 4, in terms of time they've been pretty equal relative to the uh, major move up that preceded it. And so it's just before the 0.382 that it finds its bottom and starts to go sideways. Okay, so yeah, that's what I wanted to show you on this chart. So there are the, those two arguments. So in terms of price and time, I do feel that enough uh, of a correction has been made. The next thing, So let's pull up the log scale. Next thing, simple moving averages. May, these are really significant. So on a let's stick, so weekly is significant. You can see the 200 simple moving average offers support here. What's the daily show? So yeah, the weekly is, is clearly very significant here. You can see back here offers support also, and it's offering support again now. 
Um, so yeah, 200 week, 200 day moving averages. These are very, very significant. They're what a lot of people will look at and they're markers of trend. And you can see we've tested it here. Typically a major pullback will come down and it will test, you know, the 100, the 200 and they'll often eventually act as support. And you can see that it has acted as support here. So that's just another argument for why it could potentially be at the bottom. Um, so, and the other thing is that obviously volume. So that was the, the volume is the thing that was concerning me and the thing that put me off calling this the bottom when, when we got to this point, okay? But we all know that volume can be manipulated and in particular in crypto because it's generally quite a shady uh, environment. And so don't be surprised if you know the volume is manipulated to encourage trading or to hide you know, market orders. And that said, major institutions, are they buying through the exchanges? Are they buying their crypto directly from miners? Are they actually mining the coins themselves? Okay. These are the things you've got to consider. So not every institutional transaction is going to be depicted on this chart. Okay. So yeah, these are the, all the arguments I can give for it being bullish. Now let's look at the Elliott wave count if this is bullish. So if we zoom in now, let's go on the daily. Now it's not very clear actually um wave count now okay let's just say this is an impulsive wave one up wave two so we know already that we've reached the 1.618 because we've discussed that so we reached our 1.618 up here now this went sideways for quite some time so i wouldn't be surprised for the two uh, for the wave three to test the 2.618. So if this were bullish, I'd expect us to come up to here. This is 6,200. And you can see there's lots of sideways price action here and lots of resistance. So it's obviously price is gonna to have to pull back at some point. And so if it is bullish, if we do break beyond this level, I'd be looking for price to at least come up to 5,800 where the next major level of resistance is. But 6,200, certainly I'd expect some kind of a pullback. Um, yeah, so that's the way I'd be looking at it really, um, if it were to be bullish. So, but for me, obviously we need to, for this level being lost would be a massive blow for the bears. And then the final blow for me would be a break, a significant break of this upper warning line. And then I'd be forced to really, really consider the bullish argument. And now until this breaks, I can't say that I've suddenly switched my sentiment. However, I'm a little bit concerned the fact that price has had a chance to bounce off this level downwards and it hasn't done. That, that is raising concerns for me from a, for a bearish, from a bearish point of view. So I, I'm very 50, 50 at the moment, to be honest. I'm really waiting to see what happens. Um, there's not many moments where I've been so in the balance. And uh, and that's the reason I'm throwing out both arguments so that we can be prepared for both scenarios. Um, but let's say we do get a nice daily close above this level. You know, it, it might be cons worth considering, you know, buying anything close to this dotted line at what so that's at four nine seven nine up to fifty eight hundred because that's the next major level of resistance up here if we bring on our volume at price you can see well this level already you can see it's it's a low volume node and another reason we find a lot of resistance uh, a resistance at this level but the next low volume node is around here 5800 so yeah that's the bullish and bearish argument guys um, I don't think I have much more to add here 
uh, as I say at the present um, it's not looking good the fact that we haven't dramatically bounced off this level and so I am prepared for price to go above and there could be a, a long opportunity up to 5800 and if we break this upper warning line then certainly I might have to reassess my whole um, my bias as to whether I'm bullish or bearish but uh, yeah I've certainly undecided at present until we find out you know what happens during this week with regards to price around this line all right fine I think I'm just repeating myself now so I think we'll wrap it up and yeah so if you've enjoyed today's content leave a like guys uh, any comments any queries I'm sure you've got many just leave a post in the in uh, down below and uh, yeah take care Thank you.